How you guys doing uh, today? I'm at the final, doing a walkthrough after the inspection. It failed for uh, two two items. Uh, I didn't mark one of the breakers, and another one is uh, the garage. The inspector wants garage lights to be on arc fault breaker for some reason. I gave him a NAC code. Uh, reference and it's not requiring it's not calling for a garage arc fault in 2017 code cycle uh, I'm just gonna do a walkthrough real quick uh, on a regular residential dwelling what uh, the code cycle is 2017 and basically make some pointers uh, what you know nowadays required by code in state of Virginia anyway because uh, even though the code cycle is 2017 it might be slightly different in your jurisdiction uh, here we go I'm making a so this particular house has a 400 amp service it's still gonna need a clean up oh, left a little note for the, my inspector so basically uh, your these are your arc fold breakers and these are the dual function these are uh, arc folds and gfi protected circuits you know like i basically i put ones for your dishwasher garbage disposal and uh, uh master the reason why master has a light over the shower and it's got to be uh, gfi protected and obviously arc fold protected so and that's the second panel it's pretty empty, but as you can see, uh, you probably seen the service in the previous videos. Uh, it has a 260 amp breakers for your HVAC unit. Uh, your 20 for one of the AC units, 25 for the other unit. Then a 30 water heater. A dryer is another 30. And your um, range, 40 and 50 your car charger is right here so even though it's uh it doesn't look like too many breakers but it adds up real quick it's 200 amp panel 400 amp service so that's uh 120 amps just in between the heaters and then your car charger that's 170 amps if you're really gonna be just using those three breakers at full capacity that's 170 amps and then your range 40 your dryer if you're gonna obviously usually people don't use everything on the same time at the same time and obviously there is a, a load calculation uh, required that we follow by we go by so it should it's plenty of it's by the I didn't really do a load calculation because basically it's at 400 displays for this house. It's uh, I believe it's 2,400 square foot and a car garage. It's 25 by 25, I believe. So basically, car garage. This is a dual bay. Uh, so each bay is supposed to have its own uh, outlet. So there is one outlet right here, GFI protected another outlet right here and obviously there's got to be outlet within 25 feet of your uh, water heater or AC for service purposes and there is one there's uh, two uh, garage outlets for garage door uh, openers this right here that's the access to your grounding system so if uh i guess if for future reference if uh, if they're gonna decide to uh do a service upgrade they have uh, access and they can see where the grounding is it's basically a rebar comes out of the uh your footing and basically you put a clamp here and a, a bear copper goes up to the first panel and then jumps to the second one 
there is no copper water lines it's all plastic so we don't have to use any other grounding systems besides the footing all right once you walk in you're supposed to have a switches at least a switch to uh turn lights on it's a three-way then you have your island lights this is on the single pole uh island's supposed to have at least an and one outlet right here gfi protected you're supposed to have uh well it's a dedicated refrigerator circuit on arc fold breaker uh, this kitchen, uh, it's supposed to have two kitchen uh, countertop outlets, dedicated circuits, just for this purpose. Uh, it's uh, arc fold. No, these are not. Uh, Virginia doesn't require kitchen, bathroom, GFIs. They're not. They don't have to be on arc fold breakers. Uh, I'm sure in your state, most likely you do have to have it on arc fold breaker. Uh, basically, this is a disposal switch outlet. Outlet, if the uh, outlet's gotta have a speed, uh, you gotta have a countertop outlet uh, every two feet well, two feet from the edge and then four feet apart. That way, if you're gonna have a like a coffee maker and it, the cord is only two feet, you can reach each uh, you know in either or direction microwave dedicated circuit uh, range 40 amp uh, outlet behind on the floor then this right here I don't really usually do it like that it's a two different uh, game boxes it's just the way the framing was there was no space for me to put um, uh, to put a five gang. Actually, the five gang I, at the time I couldn't find the five gang plate in this configuration, so I end up putting a three gang and a two gang. And since there was no not enough space between the joists and this counter space is limited. I had to do it what I, you know, with two separate boxes. Usually, if there would be enough space, I would space it out and have some space in between the two, two gain and three gain, but this wasn't the case. All right, uh, basically, outlets you're supposed to have an outlet within uh, six feet from your opening which is like the door opening right here. Well, it's not a door, but like opening in the room. And then you're supposed to have, for instance, if there is six feet right here, this is a little overkill, but that's what in, they wanted. Uh, so if you would have outlet here, if there is no break between the outlets, you can have up to like basically the maximum space between the two outlets is 12 feet. Look at this view really pretty I really like these windows and basically this is a walkout there's a patio in the back so you're supposed to have a switch there is a switch for outside light and a three-way here to control this dining room light it's like a dining room slash I don't know I guess Eat in kitchen table. It's an open space concept. Uh, then you have these recess lights. It's a flash mount light. So basically, the there it goes. You put a four inch, uh, four inch junction box, not a junction box, JB or nail on, whatever you have, and then you put this flash mounts. Back in the day, they only had a recess can that's metal that goes up in the ceiling on the rough end stage. But this is this is cheaper, and that's what they wanted, so that's what I put in. This was supposed to. This was wired for a ceiling fan, 
but um, they are they didn't had one so they just told me to put the regular flash mount uh, light it looks almost exactly like a recess can and then these right here uh, they wanted some four inch lights over like an eyeball type over the fireplace they're supposed to uh, put brick or some type of stone to cover this space right here and they actually asked me to run conduit uh, it's a two inch flexible conduit uh, for their network I guess they're gonna have some I'm not sure if they're gonna have speakers but they have cat5 in there and basically they're supposed to have I think they're gonna they, they said they're gonna have uh, bookshelves here so you I ran the two inch conduit from here and on the side right here there is a blank cover so I guess they can they're gonna be able to run their cables HDMI and stuff and have everything on the side instead of behind TV. Uh, there is a doorbell right there. Um, personally, I used to put uh, I used to put transformers in the basement. This house doesn't have a basement; it has a crawl space, and just run on have the access to the transformer in the basement. I seen one electrician how he did it and basically I copied him. Uh, I just put a two, uh, two gain box behind the tra uh, doorbell and I put a transformer in there so it's accessible and next person don't have to look for a transformer as soon as you take that box off there's a transformer and it's pretty accessible and if they ever decide to go switch to uh, like a doorbell camera uh, they can just uh, leave the transformer in there and take that box off and put a blank blank uh, blank cover uh, I seen this idea like I said from different electrician and I kind of liked it and basically I started doing it like that too uh, they also wanted the four inch eyeball right here I call it eyeball it's adjustable uh, here they're supposed to have a a uh, big uh, some kind of picture frame or something so they wanted extra light um, so this these outlets they're on separate circuit see like right here from this edge of the wall to the first outlet it's got to be maximum six feet if it would be like seven feet, the inspector would see it and he would make me add another outlet. Like right here, uh, this right here, it has like three outlets. You would think like, why would you need three outlets? At first, this was addition. It wasn't part of the plan on the roughing stage. At first, I put that outlet there, but inspector, he measures from the door, sliding door, see it only uh, the half opens, the other one doesn't. So he, ma he ca counts six feet from this opening. So from here to here is like six and a half feet. And he told me he wanted another outlet right here. I mean, to me, it looks like, yeah, it's got to be like six and a half feet. So basically, you got to have, if there is a door that doesn't open right here, you gotta count six feet from the opening that you can open. So from here to here, it can't be no more than six feet. And I guess it's like six and a half. So I end up adding another outlet. Same thing right here. The inspector, he's a little bit rough with me here. <laughs> uh, so basically this, I used to, I, I just had um, the outlet there and outlet there. Uh, your uh, dining room is supposed to have a 20 amp circuit. So I had a 20 amp right there and a 15 amp there. 
for because this considered to be a, a living room. Well, he made me add another outlet right there because he he said this is a dining room and you're supposed to have another outlet. So uh, I'm not a fighter, you know, when it comes to code. Even though to me it doesn't make much sense, but if the inspector wants it certain way, it's just easier to say yes, sir. I'll move it. I'll add it instead of fighting. And then if you're gonna be on the on his blacklist, <laughs> it's gonna be a nightmare. So obviously I had to add an outlet behind the fireplace. Uh, each uh, front outside is supposed to have a outlet so there's outlet there there's it's supposed to have an outlet in the back so it has an outlet in the back and it's supposed to have an outlet service outlet be, within 25 feet from the AC HVAC unit AC unit outdoor a condensing unit so that's what I had to do I had to put another outlet by uh, HVAC on the side of the house uh, each bathroom, usually the way I do it, your first switch is your vanity. Your second one is the bath uh, fan light. And third one is your exhaust bath fan. Pretty simple setup. Uh, this is the hallway. This is their office. They actually requested me to put these track lights on each side of the room. And they actually look pretty, pretty cool. Took me a little bit longer to uh, line them up and assemble them. It was like a custom order. Uh, they're supposed to have pictures on the frame, on the wall or drawing or whatever. Uh, art, some kind of art. And they have this light this is the color lights they wanted that's what they got and they wanted dimmers these are regular toggle dimmers pretty simple um, there's a TV jack I don't put TV jacks I just put uh, pre-wire that way, in most cases, people don't even use them anymore because everything is Wi-Fi nowadays. This is a laundry room, a switch at the entrance, a GFI for their dryer. I mean, uh, yeah, dry, uh, not dryer, washer, and a 30 amp dryer outlet. Uh, also, oh, it's somebody took the cover off and it's missing the screw. Probably painters. I gotta go back and put the screw in. Because this customer, man, he made me uh, move all the lights pretty much. I gotta come back with the screwdriver. He is really particular about his. Uh, house. I mean, I don't really blame them, but it's just some people they are more particular. All right, this is another bedroom. All right, each bedroom is supposed to have smoke detector, and you're supposed to have a carbon monoxide within 10 feet from the bedroom. So basically, there is a master here uh, that could be considered as a bedroom or office. And this one, I put basically in between, so it's uh, within 10 feet each bedroom of a, a carbon monoxide, because they're like 50 bucks a piece, so. Uh, then you have this uh, master, pretty nice size. I mean, it's probably 14 by 15. So you have a switch here. At first, the door was supposed to swing out this way, so I put a switch in there on that side, and they told me uh, they're gonna have a pocket door. Pocket door usually goes in the wall, so you can't 
have any obstruction and then they change their mind and they they put a barn door which looks pretty good i mean i guess whoever likes these kind of doors same thing here at first i put these switches on this side right here which makes sense because the door was supposed to swing out but then customer did a changeover and he wanted the pocket door like this so obviously pocket door goes inside of the wall and obviously if you had the switches here it would not open or close so i had to relocate the switches oh this is a bathroom just typical bath fan light combo or oh, two single poles then this customer wants these hanging pendant lights so I had to uh, put them in I had these lights on the down rods they were lower he requested me to uh, bring them up so I had to uh, take it off and bring those up all right another code right here it's a double sink if you have a double sink uh, you gotta have two outlets on each side of the sink these are regular outlets uh, but there are there are uh, GFI protected the GFI is in the other bathroom so you got four bathrooms and they're on the same circuit I mean that's you can have up to I think 10 10 uh, 10 outlets on 20 amp circuit I mean yeah if you are gonna have two three uh, hair dryers running at the same time it will trip but we're just going by the code all right uh, let's go upstairs this is ki this kitchen is pretty nice oh another thing they, they wanted uh, under cabinet lights so this switch this switch I ran a switch leg from here to this pantry room and all my wires low voltage wires they go in the junction box then out of the junction box this is the this is what they bought this is the uh, power supply I think it's I mean to me I would put a little bit bigger than this what is it uh, I would put 12 volts 2 amps I guess 2 amps not too bad so then this outlet being controlled by that switch that I showed you so that's really easier location to service it I'm sure they're gonna have some kind of shelves here eventually but if they if they ever just if they'll ever need to change this power supply it's accessible instead of putting it inside of the cabinets and a lot of times when I'm doing a final they don't have the cabinets even yet so this is how I did it. You got low voltage wires coming out. And you got this light. I mean, I don't really like the way the wires are. I use the um, hot glue to glue the wire up to the cabinet. Uh, I wish these jackets, they had, they were, they had a white jacket. But that's all I had at Home Depot when I was buying it. it was, if it would be white, it would look a lot nicer. But unfortunately, that's what I had. Oh, and this fan, at first they bought regular fan without the down rod. Well, actually they did have down rod, but it was like only 8 inches. So the ceiling fan was almost touching the ceiling then they looked at it and they decided to change it and put this uh like a two foot down rod 
it looks nicer. All right, now we're going up. All right, this stairway, I believe the code requires if there is a sta uh, four steps, I think. Uh, I could be wrong. If it has more steps than probably a couple, then you gotta have a three-way. Well, anytime there's a stairway, I put a three-way. So you got a three-way for the lights here. And you can control these lights from the other side, from upstairs, right here. So I put another, another carbon right here. And this is a bonus room. It's pretty big size, pretty good size. They want it on uh, dimmers, on dimmer. So it's a three-way dimmer. So same code for the outlets. See, this is this is about ten feet from one outlet to the other. And there's a TV uh, jack, TV pre-wire. Then you have this walk-in closet. I put a light here, light switch and light. This right here, once you open, that's like a walk-in um, utility, whatever room. So you have a switch here that controls the light. For service and you're supposed to have a service outlet in case if somebody HVAC person have to work on this unit he has a plug-in well back in the day all your power tools used to be uh, corded you know nowadays before I used to uh, carry a generator with me to like use it for a drill and stuff Everything nowadays is cord, uh, uh, cordless, so I don't know. To me, if you run a business and you still use corded tools, you're missing out. So this is a storage, so you're supposed to have a light. All right, this right here, yeah, this is Jill and Jack bathroom. So you can access it from your bonus room or your guest room. If it has two doors, you want to have a three-way switch. Because once you get in the room, you got to be able to control your lights. So I put a three-way for uh, the vanity lights. The single pole for your fan light and a single pole for your exhaust fan and obviously this is a two sink so you gotta have a outlet on each side of the sink this right here just pretty good sized bedroom that's kind of weird the way Layout, it's laid out. It's like a hallway in the bedroom, but that's how it is. Then you have a kind of walk in, pretty oversized uh, closet, light switch, and a light uh, outlet. If the hallway, in the hallway, you're supposed to have at least one outlet. If it's over seven feet, I believe. And basically, it has an outlet and a switch. Switch is tied in this light and this fan. Most of the time, I just ran a three wire. Um, so if they ever decide to, they want two separate switches for a fan and a light, they can have a double stack. The reason why I don't put two gains anymore because most cases, most people that buy ceiling fans, they have it, they have remote control. Like downstairs, they have remote controls. 
So if you're going to have remote control, you're going to be only using one wire. So black wire, not red or whatever. Uh, so then I used to put two gains and two switches and one switch would be doing nothing. It would be like people would be asking, what is that switch for? So I just start running uh, 14.3, but just put in a single gain. If a customer, some random customer gonna want two switch, two separate switches and not gonna wanna use a remote control, I can just put a double stack. So that's that. And that's pretty much it. We're just gonna go outside and uh, look at the units. Oh, this is the another bedroom. This is a smaller closet, so I didn't put a light in there. It's pretty small. This is another bathroom. See right here. This is a, a, a single sink, so it has one outlet, and this is GFI. Uh, usually, I run, I install a GFI home run coming from the panel is the closest because underneath is a garage where your 400 amp service is. So. Uh, I just came up and this was the first one. I home run it here and that's why this is GFI and the rest is GFI protected by this GFI. So you got the first switch also your light and second one is your fan. Pretty small tiny uh, bathroom. And this is another bedroom. Uh, it has one of these funny looking fans. I mean, the ceiling is just the way it goes. I'm sure if they would put a bigger uh, bigger fan, it would probably look too uh, too big, you know, where the blades would be almost touching sides of the uh, room. So this, this is okay, I guess. All right, we're going downstairs. And outside. Oh, let me shut the light off. So, this is a three gain right there. Uh, I didn't have enough space right here for the switches. So I had to put it all the way on the other side of the window, which I don't like, but I had no other options. The, all this was a frame. It was all a bunch of two by fours right here. I, ha I had no chance, no, I had no other options. Same thing right here. Right here, there was no space at all. I actually had to notch a two by four, actually one and a half two by fours to put my boxes in. And I had to contact general contractor, told him, tell him, you know, the situation. And uh, he said, yeah, I can't do it and I guess it passed the inspection, but I didn't like it. Uh, there was like, I guess it was they over, went over the board, they said, with uh, all the studs. They had like, I forgot what it was. It was like eight studs and uh, they did the load calculation on the, uh, they did their math and they said, I can take the one and a half stud out. Uh, I wanted them to do it, but they weren't available, so I ended up doing it myself. They had like 20 nails in there. That was fun to uh, get that stuff out. All right, so we're going outside. Uh, this three-way is for your living room lights. This one right here. I think this is a floodlight they want, and outside lights. So there's a floodlight on the on the corner of the house. That's what they want. They want a floodlight. But when it came to a final, they bought a bunch of outside lights, regular looking lights, and they said, go ahead, just put that light. So that's what I did. It's gonna look funny, but you can see it in a second. So like you see, it has this light by this door and two lights on each side of the window. Then it has that floodlight supposed to, was supposed to go in the corner of the house. It's mod, so uh, uh, maybe, hold on. Let me close this door because I'm not going through the, I'm not gonna be going 
Well, I'll just come outside from the other side. This is garage. Uh, garage doors. They need a pre-wire for the sensors. So you have three uh, low voltage wires there. One wire goes out to one sensor right here and the other wire goes to the other sensor so all as electrician I do I just run the pre-wire and then another wire comes from the same location and it goes here for your remote button uh, drywallers they bury the wire and Contractor had to open a wall up. I wasn't here to find the wire. He was asking me where I ran it. I told him. Uh, basically, you, this is another walkout, so you gotta have a switch for outside. Uh, these outside lights, they are on uh, photocell. So even though the switch is on, it's not gonna be on unless you cover the eye. Um, and this is a three-way the controls from two locations. All right, and this is a 400 amp service. It's 320 amp uh, meter socket. And you're supposed to have a low voltage um, grounding bar. Uh, I used to run it off the, connect the grounding wire in the meter socket, but a uh, local electrical company, they told me not to do it anymore. They want the ground wire coming out of the meter, uh, not the meter box, but actually from the panel. And that's what I'm, what, what I started doing. So this is the front of the house. It has a bunch of lights actually. One, two, three, four. Four, their front. Then they have the pendant light by the door, doorbell button right there, and outlet. All right, let's go look at the back or side. The elevation wasn't done completely yet, so uh, so you have this service outlet right here. It's gotta be within 25 feet from the H, uh, from the AC units. These AC units, you're supposed to have a disconnect, service disconnect for each one. Uh, you're supposed to have a strap within, I believe 12 feet, 12 inches. And then it goes, connects to the each unit. So that's pretty much it. I mean, they, they're they trying to get it done ASAP, so... Uh, I think I'm pretty sure we're done. We did what inspector wanted us to. And hopefully, people are gonna be moving in pretty soon. Alright guys, till the next time.